Hi there. Welcome to the Health Analytic Insights Podcast. This podcast is all about creating a community of like-minded individuals who are passionate about the field of health informatics. I hope to share information and advice in topics such as health analytics, digital health, biomedical engineering, and data visualization in healthcare. And in exchange, I would love to hear from you, dear listener, about your experience and interest in this field. You can drop me a line at healthanalyticinsights at gmail.com. And this email, along with any references discussed during this podcast, will be listed in the show notes below. If this resonates with you, don't forget to follow and subscribe to this podcast, as I'll be releasing new episodes bi-weekly. Before we jump into the episode, I want to let you know that I've written a step-by-step guide to help you through the process of securing your first role in health informatics by providing you with concrete examples of what roles to search for, common skills requested by employers, example interview questions, and much more. If this is of interest to you, you can check out the show notes of the episode where I have a link to the ebook below. Now, let's get back into the episode. In previous episodes, I talked about patient satisfaction scores and the correlation between wait times and patient satisfaction scores and how natural language processing algorithms have been used to quantify patient experience. If that's of interest to you, make sure to go and listen to those episodes. The last metric that will be a part of this series is the average length of stay in hospital. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development defines the average length of stay in hospitals as the total number of days stayed by all inpatients, excluding day stays, divided by the number of admissions or discharges. Length of stay can be a tricky metric to understand and a balanced approach is key. Discharge a patient too soon, and this can lead to long-term negative adverse health effects and increased readmission rates. Discharge a patient not soon enough, and this can result in poor satisfaction scores. Overcrowding of the emergency department, if there are not enough hospital beds available, and financial repercussions. As you can imagine, the length of stay in hospital will vary widely depending on why the patient is at the hospital. According to the Canadian Institute for Health Information, the most common inpatient surgery in Canada in 2020 to 2021, was a cesarean section with an average acute length of stay of 2.7 days. This was followed by hip replacement, 5.8 days, and knee replacement, 2.7 days. So to account for this variation in hospital stay, depending on why the patient has been admitted to hospital, diagnosis-related groups, or DRGs, were created as a patient classification system which associates the type of patients a hospital treats to the costs incurred by the hospital. So these DRGs were originally developed by the scientific team around Robert B. Fetter in the late 60s at Yale University. And some papers have shown a reduction in hospital length when applying a DRG lens to targeted care. The one caveat is because it's often tied to financial incentives, there's always a risk that a patient might be discharged too soon. So this has been a brief overview of how the length of stay in hospital is calculated and classified. As I've spoken in the past, not one of these metrics we have discussed in the healthcare analytic series exists in a silo. It would be beneficial to have multiple metrics to look at that are specific to a hospital based on the number of patients the hospital usually cares for, the geographical location of the hospital, and many other factors. Because many of these metrics, readmission rates, wait times, patient satisfaction scores, hospital length of stay, exist in tandem and affect each other. As we spoke about previously, the patient satisfaction score and emergency department wait times have a strong correlation, and all of these metrics contribute to each other to describe the journey of the patient through the hospital system. So the purpose of this health analytic metrics deep dive is that at the end of the series, I'll be creating a hospital key performance indicator dashboard in Power BI 
which will include all the metrics which I've mentioned during this series. I've heard from many of you that you're looking to create a project that you can link to in your resume when job searching and understanding the metrics that will be on this dashboard is the first step. In the next episode, we'll be wrapping up the series with an overview of considerations when building a clinical dashboard. Thank you for listening to the Health Analytic Insights Podcast. I'd love to hear from you about topics I should cover in future episodes. Please consider subscribing and leaving a review. Have a wonderful day.